Well, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night recharge. If you're new with us uh, tonight, we've been walking through this semester different commands that Jesus demands of the world. Let me give you a quick recap of uh, a couple previous ones. <clears throat> One of which is you and I are called to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, right? That is a command. And then last week, we looked at Jesus telling us that that we are called to fear him who can cast soul and body into the eternal hell. And we worked through that. Now, I bring that up um, again because tonight, as we move on to the next command, Jesus tells us, even though, like, those two commands deal with him, our awe, our love, our fear, all of that consuming because he is unlike any other, but listen to tonight's command. Jesus commands that you and I would not be anxious, that we would not be filled with anxiety. And tonight, specifically about the necessities of life. So, so there's a command towards his presence, but whenever it comes this way, let me read a couple of these verses for us. Listen, for this reason, Jesus says, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, <clears throat> nor for your body as to what you will put on. Um, Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Skip down a couple verses. Do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? Uh, Verse 34. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Luke 12, 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, For your father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. Chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. So to to state this plainly, God the Father does not wish in any way for us to be an anxious people. Jesus commands us, do not worry. Okay? So... In fact, we will see he is glorified by our ability to not be an anxious people. Part of the sign, right, essentially of of confusing or being like the world is our own anxiety. Why is this? Because one of the things we'll see at the end, the promise that's at the end, is that we have a God who not only knows us personally, but works for us. We're going to flesh that out. He works for us to meet all of our needs. All right, so quickly, there are eight reasons that Jesus lists here. If you go through Matthew, uh, beginning in verse 25, all the way through uh, the end of that section in verse uh, 34, There are eight reasons that Jesus gives for why you and I are called to not be anxious over uh, material possessions and the needs of life. Number one, the first reason. So look, he says at the end of this, right, after he says, do not worry, he says, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Okay, so If you really put your finger on what it is that we're afraid of with our food and with our clothing, we could boil it down to three simple statements, right? That would be the loss of pleasure, okay? Um, That is, we we like food, food food tastes good, there's a comfort associated with it, uh, both food and clothing and the necessities of life. There's a loss of human praise, Okay, that is, we feel very naked without clothes, as well as when you're really put together, people are like, he's looking good. Look at that, right? Or thirdly, in the most severe instances, there is the loss of life. These are necessities to us, okay? You have to eat and you have to have shelter. But listen to what Jesus is saying here, because he's calling us 
to something deeper, to something greater, okay? In other words, he's calling us to God himself. Is not your life, isn't it not even greater than the food that you need to sustain life? Why? Because God is calling you to himself, and he is given you heaven as your eternal home, and he has given you kingdom work here and now. There is a greater, deeper calling even than the sustaining of life, and he calls us to think this way. So number one reason, because there's a greater purpose and a greater calling that's going on. Number two reason, okay, he says, look, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap. They don't gather into barns. Are you not more valuable than they? So the the bird gets up and works for his food, right? He gets up and he scours for worms and for seed and for all of it. But it is a daily pursuit. And here, Jesus says, God is actually the one who is feeding them. But they don't hoard tomorrow's food, do they? They have no ability to store in pantry, but yet they get up the next day trusting that God will feed them again. So the principle for us, God uh, cares for the birds. Are you not more valuable than them? Will God not be your God and provide for you? Number three, um, And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? In other words, it's fruitless. It doesn't get you anywhere, right? Worrying is is just making your life miserable and not accomplishing anything. So Jesus is very pragmatic here. He's like, look, it's not getting you any further. Why are you so worried? Number four, and why are you worried about clothing? And now, first he said the birds, now he said, look at the flowers. Look at the lilies of the field. They do not, uh, they grow and they do not toil or spin. I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was clothed, uh, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, Will he not much more clothe you? Will he clothe you? In other words, Jesus says, I want you to look at nature and I want you to see your father's heart. Your father is generous and overflowing to clothe the grass. Okay? Now, you say, well, does this mean that Christians will not be poor and that every Christian will be clothed like Solomon? No, okay? That's not to negate the other commands that Jesus has already said, right? There will be poor. Christians will be impoverished. In fact, some will even die, okay? Um, We're called to take up our cross and follow him. We're called to put the kingdom first. So what is, Jesus is saying is first, understand your father's heart. This is the sort of father that he is, okay? And by the way, the riches that await you in heaven are greater than what you could ever imagine. So as you seek his kingdom, trust him. You can trust him. The kingdom is first. He will provide for your needs to seek the kingdom first. And yes, there will be Christians who have the riches of the world, and there are plenty of commands throughout Scripture, right? Share those with those in need. Number five, number five and six, they're together in in, uh, one verse For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. Okay, so think back to the last one, right? Does this mean we're all going to be clothed in magnificent, uh, uh, kingly uh, wardrobes? No, no, no. That's not the promise. You see, the Gentiles, that is those who do not know God, they seek after these things. 
okay? Because they find all of their value there. But you are not supposed to be like that. And he's going to come. What are you, you're supposed to seek the kingdom first, okay? And then six, your he- heavenly father knows, already knows that you need these things. So you are not supposed to be like the unbeliever. Rather, you are supposed to trust your father. To be filled with anxiety is to be too much like the world. And it is a sign of being too far away from God. Because can we put these two together? You cannot be anxious and close to God. Because in God's presence, would there be any anxiety in his presence? No. His presence cast out fear. And seven, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. So I made the statement at the beginning that if you flesh this out, that the Christian God, Jesus' Father, is a God who works for you. Now, that may perk up your ears a little bit, like, wait a second, we don't normally talk in those categories. Isaiah 64, verse 4, from days of old, they have not seen nor heard a God like you who acts or who works on behalf of those who wait for him. So in the same way that a doctor works for the sickly patient, and yet the doctor is the one who is in the exalted position because he has all the knowledge and all the resources to give, and yet he works for the sickly patient? You understand that relationship? In that way, the Bible says God works for you because he calls you his own. And therefore, he wants to abundantly supply unto you Okay, Psalm fifteen, uh, Psalm fifty, verse ten says, "Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me." In other words, God is saying, "I am the superhero. I will swoop in and save the day. You will be in trouble, and I am the rescuer." Second uh, Chronicles sixteen nine: The eyes of the Lord search. Uh, to and fro throughout the land, looking for those to give strong support whose heart is fully towards him. He is looking to work for you in the sense, back to our verse here, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Beloved, do not be anxious do not be like the world. They, they chase those things. But you have a heavenly father who has called you to his kingdom, who has called you to eternal life, who has promised you heaven. Do not be like them. Trust your heavenly. Seek first his kingdom And understand that your life is about the kingdom work. And that work cannot be thwarted. And all of your days, and even the works of the kingdom, have been prepared from the foundation of the world. And it is your job, beloved, to walk in them. And it is your job to trust that the Father is going to provide for your needs, for food and for clothing, and it's your job to walk in kingdom work. And in this, you're going to be so different from the world because you're not going to be anxious. You're not going to be anything like them. That anxiety, it's gone because your heavenly Father is with you. The eighth and final point, So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Tomorrow has its troubles and its worries, 
and we don't borrow them. Because God is God tomorrow. And you trust him. You'll be God tomorrow. And you're my God today. And you have a kingdom work for me today. And you'll be God tomorrow. And you'll have a kingdom work tomorrow. And I will not be like the world. I trust you're on your throne. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we want to be obedient to your commands, King Jesus. And you are commanding us, do not be anxious like the world. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But we want to seek first your kingdom. And put that into practice. Every one of us in our hearts, Father, we have worries. We have doubts. We have areas where we're suffering, where, where we look at situations that are not going according to our plans and, and, and where thorns and thistles or obstacles pop up. And, and Father, we get anxious and we worry because it is way beyond our control. But we trust you. And we seek first your kingdom. And we trust that you will provide as we step out in faith. Jesus, help us to walk in that confidence and to shine your light to a lost world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.